The law of conservation of mass tells us that matter can't be created or destroyed. So in a chemical reaction, we don't have hydrogen atoms appearing from nowhere. We don't have carbon atoms disappearing into nothingness. We have to have a balanced chemical equation to accurately describe the reaction that's occurring. And the way we do this is we use whole number coefficients in front of each substance. Those coefficients multiply all the subscripts in the chemical formula that follows. And it's really, really important, never, never, never change a chemical formula to balance the equation. It's so tempting sometimes. So just make it so much easier, but you can't do that. So let's look at some examples now that we ran over the rules a little bit. Let's look at this reaction, this chemical equation. This would be hydrogen gas reacts with chlorine gas to form, how would we name that? Is that named as an acid? No, because it's a gas. So we would name it as a binary molecular compound. We call it hydrogen chloride. So that's what the equation says, and that looks all very nice. But let's look at what that represents. So we have pictures here, because pictures can be really, really helpful. H2 is two hydrogen atoms stuck together. And chlorine, two, is two chlorine atoms stuck together. And when a chemical reaction occurs, it's a little bit like playing with Lego blocks. So if you imagine that these are two white Lego bricks stuck together and two green Lego bricks stuck together, how would you make this guy over here? You'd take this apart and you'd take this apart and you'd put one of the white ones on the green one and you'd have that. What happened to the other white one and the other green one? They're still there. Legos don't disappear. Sometimes we think that special piece has disappeared, but we know that they can't actually do that. So this equation that we wrote is not really describing what happened because we still have, hmm, I'll just draw that as a, that's, that's the white one. Because we still have these pieces left over, right? So we need to describe what happens with them. Well, if we made one of these, probably these two are going to do the same thing, right? So let's, let's draw that. So there's a little white ball and the green ball. What we do to, to make this equation represent what's actually happening is the coefficient. So here we have one of those molecules and one of these molecules, and over here we have two of those molecules. So we're just going to put a two in front of that to show that there are two of those that get made. Does that make sense? When you can see in your mind what a chemical equation represents, it's very straightforward. If you can't picture what's going on, it's not going to make a lot of sense. So I don't want to lose you right now. I want, I want you to stay with me. It's just like playing with Tinker Toys or Lego blocks or whatever building toy you had when you were a child. And you take these two apart and you stick them together. From these pieces, you make two of those because you need to use up all the pieces. And this is just describing what's going on. We had one piece that was two H's, and we had one that was two CL's, and now we have two particles. They are each one H and one CL stuck together. Okay, let's look at one that's a little more complicated. Here's aluminum and oxygen reacting to form aluminum oxide. So aluminum is an element, it's not diatomic, and so it comes in individual pieces. And oxygen is one of the diatomic elements, and so it's going to come in pairs, two atoms stuck together in a molecule. 
we know from the charges that aluminum and oxygen take when they become ions that the formula is Al2O3. In one formula unit of this, there are two aluminum atoms and three oxygen atoms. Can we build this from these pieces? There's not enough of them, is there? Because we need two aluminum atoms. So in our equation, we need to indicate that there are two aluminum atoms. So now my equation tells me there's two aluminum atoms. But over here, there's three oxygen atoms. And here, there's only two. But oxygen comes in pairs. You can't just get one. It's like, you know, going to the shoe store. No, I just want the left shoe. No, sorry, you have to buy both of them. Oxygen comes as a pair. So if we, if we put, what am I doing here? If we put a 2 in front of this, that's not what I meant to do, then we're going to have this. We're going to have another molecule of that. There we go. It's craziness. But there's only two, three of them over here. So that's not, that's not balanced, is it? If these were bowling balls on a teeter-totter, the teeter-totter would not be level. There's too many balls on this side. But we can't just get half of one, so we must, we're going to have to put more over here. If, if two of these got formed, keep picking the wrong tool, then we would have six red pieces. Who says you don't get to color when you're a grown-up? Six red pieces and four silver pieces. Because when I put a two in front of there, it multiplies all these coefficients. That's what they were talking about. I'm mean, sorry, all those subscripts. It multiplies the subscripts for the formula immediately after it. So this is saying I have two of these units. Each unit has two aluminums and three oxygens. So then I'm going to double the number of oxygens. I'm going to double the number of aluminum atoms. Well, this isn't really fixing our problem yet, is it? We need, we need more aluminums over here. So I'm going to change the number in front, how many do I want to have there? Four. I want four. So then I'll draw two more of them over here. So the four in front of AL tells me I have four aluminum atoms. And now that's matching up over here, right? Over here, though, I have six of the red ones. And here I have four of the red ones. Well, if I change this coefficient, what would I need to get six oxygen? I'd put a three here. Because the three times the two, each of them has two. It's like a bicycle. If I have six, I'm sorry, if I have three bicycles, how many wheels are there? Six wheels. Okay, so three of those units, then I'll get another like this, with two red ones. And now I have the same number of red and silver balls on each side of the arrow. And that's what a balanced chemical equation is. When we balance a chemical equation, the only thing you can do is put numbers in front of the formulas. You cannot change the subscript, because that changes what the compound is. And that's not up to you to decide what that is. Aluminum and oxygen form Al2O3. They do not form Al2O2. It just doesn't happen. Any questions? 
So here are guidelines for balancing chemical equations. And this method is called balancing by inspection, meaning you look at it and you figure it out. So these are guidelines. They're not hard and fast rules. The first thing to do, very important, make sure that the chemical formulas that you wrote down are correct. If the formulas are wrong, the whole thing's going to end up being wrong, and you may not be able to balance it at all. So if the formulas are given, make sure you copied them down correctly. If the names were given, make sure you interpreted that as a formula correctly. And then this is the part where we're really doing something. You balance each element by putting a coefficient in front of the substances. We assume there to be a 1 in front, and so we don't, we don't write the number 1. It's kind of a pattern. Chemists don't like the number 1. We don't write it. So if the formula is there without a coefficient, that means the coefficient is 1. If it's other than 1, you write the number. Usually it works out best to start with the most complex or complicated formula. If you have polyatomic ions, you can usually balance those as a single unit, like if you had sulfate ion. If there's sulfate ion in the reactants and sulfate ions in the products, you can think of that as a unit. Occasionally, those polyatomic ions break down, and in that case, you can't do that. The coefficients in your finished equation need to be whole numbers. There are situations where you might end up using a fraction, but at the end, you have to get rid of the fractions. We're just going to avoid using fractions. Then at the end, when you think you're all done, check and make sure that each element is balanced. And also, make sure that the coefficients represent the smallest whole number ratio. So if you ended up with coefficients that were, you know, 2, yeah, 2a plus 4c goes to 2b. Are those the smallest coefficients that you could use? No, we could divide all of them by 2, and we could get 1a plus 2c goes to 1b. So if you end up with um, coefficients that have a common um, factor, you need to clear that out. So let's do some. We're going to balance these chemical equations. Let's look at this first. So here, this is calcium nitrate. Here's the NO3, and that's a polyatomic ion. It's in parentheses with a 2 on the outside, meaning we have two of these units. And if we look in the products, there is also a nitrate unit over there. And so we can treat that as a, a unit. Okay, that's like in a little assembly in your Lego building that you took some stuff off of, but you left this part together. It didn't come apart. And here we have carbonate, CO3, and carbonate is staying together over there as well. So I'm going to circle those guys. Let's see, I'll maybe put them in red. So here's nitrate and nitrate, and there's, maybe I'll use a different color. There's carbonate and carbonate. You can balance the carbons, nitrogens, and oxygens separately, but it's a lot more work. So I've just identified that this nitrate, that NO3, shows up over here, and the CO3 shows up over here, and so we can treat them as a unit. And then we just need to start somewhere. Which one of these looks the most complicated to you? They kind of look all the same to me. They've all got three elements in them. So then I would usually start with the first one. So I'm going to show you two different methods. First, we'll just do straight inspection. So I'm just going to start at the beginning, since they all seem to be equally complicated. I'm going to look at the calcium. How many calciums are on this left side of the arrow? Just one. And how many are on the right side? One. We don't need to do anything to that. How many NO3 units are on the left side? Two. 
And how many on the right side? One. So we need to fix that. How could we fix that? We'll put a 2 in front of NO, NA and NO3, because that multiplies the NA and the NO3. So we've got calcium and nitrate straightened out. How many sodiums do we have on this side? Two. And how many do we have on that side? Two. Oh, cool. That worked out nice, didn't it? And here we have CO3. There's one of them. And how many over here? One. So that's balanced. We should get rid of the circles. Any questions about that one? Let's look at this one on the bottom. So another way to, to balance equations is to sort of keep a tally down below of what's going on. So I draw a vertical line through the arrow, and then um, I'm going to look again at these polyatomic ions I've got here. Here I've got SO4. There's three of them here, and I've got SO4 over there. So I can treat that as a unit, and here I have NO3, and NO3 is still intact. I can treat it as a unit. So on the left side here, I'm just going to list off the things I need to look at. There's aluminum, and then there's sulfate, and then there's barium, and then there's nitrate. So I'm just kind of making a little table down here and keeping track of what I've got on each side. So in this formula, how many aluminums are there? Two. And how many sulfates? Three. How many bariums? In this formula? Zero. And how many nitrates? Zero. And then I'm going to move over to this formula are there any aluminums or sulfates in that? No. no. So those two are going to be zero and zero. How many bariums? One. And how many nitrates? Two. two. And then I'm just going to keep going. In this guy, I've got one barium and one sulfate. So there's zero aluminums, one sulfate, one barium, and no nitrates. And in this guy, I have one aluminum, and how many nitrates? Three. So there's one, zero, zero, and three. This is a good method when you try just looking at it, and you're not getting anywhere, because some of them get a little complicated. So I have a total of two, so we can add these up. I've got two sulfates on, I'm sorry, two aluminums on the left, and I have one on the right. So I can fix that by putting a coefficient here, and I put two there, and that changes this to a two, so now I have two aluminums. It also changes the number of nitrates. I still have have three in each of these formulas, but I've got two of them, so there's six now. For sulfate, I'm going to look at the left side. Three plus zero equals three, and on the right side, I only have one. Well, this, this is the only one that has sulfate in it. If I put a three in front of that, then I'll have three sulfates, and three plus zero, total of three. Sometimes what you'll find is you've got like aluminum in two different compounds, and then it can get kind of crazy. If I put this three here, it changed the number of sulfates. It also changes the number of bariums. Are you following what I'm doing? Let's check barium. On the left, we've got 0 plus 1 equals 1. On the right, we've got 3 plus 0 equals 3. 
So we need to add some to the left side now. So we need, we need this guy right here to be a 3. So we'll put a 3 up here. And that will change this to a 3 and that. And what does it do to this number? It becomes a 6. So we've got those guys straightened out. Now we've got 0 plus 6 equals 6. And 0 plus 6 equals 6. Cool. Came out even at the end. It often does that. So there's our balanced chemical equation. We can check the, the numbers. Here we have 1, 3, 3, and 2. Those are the lowest ratio that we can do. Any questions? This is something that requires practice. You may have guessed that already. I have a question. Yes? Mm -hmm. Is that useful for every time that we um, you, you can use this method down here for any chemical equation. Um, and especially when you're just starting, I think it helps you because um, you can really see what you're doing a little bit more, just to kind of lay it all out and you know, just tally up what do I have where and how do they add up. Otherwise, when you're, when you're going across and just kind of mentally counting through, Sometimes you overlook things. So this is, this is especially useful when you're just starting to learn balancing equations. And then as you get better at it, you'll be able to just look at them and not have to write a whole bunch of stuff down. Yes. Um, this is like a math equation in that the order of things that are added doesn't matter. And so this could be written three barium nitrates plus aluminum sulfate, and it would be the same. Yeah. Now, you need to keep them on the right side of the arrow, the correct side of the arrow. But other than that, it doesn't really matter. Any other questions?